Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Iqbal and we are going to discuss flavial worms or tissue parasites. As you know that the nematodes are of two types. They are intestinal nematodes or tissue nematodes. So we are going to discuss tissue and blood resigning nematodes. Bismillah rahman rahim We are going to discuss a topic of parasitology and the topic is of tissue and blood nematodes As you know that the nematodes they belong to the metazoa and the metazoa are of three types they are either tapeworms or cystodes, flukes or trematodes and roundworms or nematodes. Then again amongst the nematodes they are divided into intestinal and tissue nematodes and we are going to discuss tissue nematodes and there is a list of tissue nematodes like Bushiraria bancrofti, Brugia malae, Brugia timuri, Loa Loa, Oncosaca volvulus, Draconculus marinensis and Trichinella species. The common characteristics of the tissue nematodes are that they need intermediate host and they are localized either in the tissue or sometimes in the blood and they are either oviparous that they lay eggs and sometimes they are lariparous or they lay Larry. The adult worms, according to the species, live in the lymphatics, the subcutaneous tissue, connective tissue, muscle or body cavity. And the female worms are viviparous that they produce live larvae. The tissue nematodes, the humans are the only or the most significant hosts of the tissue nematodes or the major medical importance except for Trichena spiralis where the natural hosts are animals like domestic pigs, bears and rats. One of the characteristics of the flavial worms is that they are transmitted through the bite of the insect vector. They are vector borne. And the Prichena spiralis is transmitted by ingestion of the larvae in infected tissue. And then again the Draconculus medinensis is transmitted by the ingestion of infected intermediate host and the intermediate host is known as cyclo. In the flavial worms, the immature first stage larva of flavial worm is called microflavia. The microflavia of pathogenic flavial worms that live in the blood show periodicity. In periodicity, the larvae they are released periodically into the peripheral blood from lung, 
blood and are therefore found in the peripheral blood in a greater number during certain hours. That's why it's known as periodicity. And in non-pathogenic blood microfleri and microfleri that are found in the skin are non-periodic. The periodicity is thought to be an adaptation by the microflare to the biting habits of their insect vectors. The exact mechanism of periodicity is not fully understood, but it is influenced by a sleeping, waking and bodily activities of the host and may depend on change in temperature, chemical composition and difference in oxygen tension between venous and arterial blood. So there are certain terms which are used to describe periodicity like nocturnal periodicity, diurnal periodicity, nocturnal sub-periodicity and diurnal sub-periodicity. The microflare are present in greatest numbers in the peripheral blood during night hours. For example, in W. Bancrofti, Bruglia Malai and Bruglia Timuri. Start. So that was nocturnal periodicity. Then the diurnal periodicity is when the microflavia are present in greatest numbers in peripheral blood during day hours. For example, in lower law. Another type of periodicity which is known as nocturnal sub-periodicity and diurnal sub-periodicity in which microflare can be found in the peripheral blood throughout 24 hours with only slight increase in numbers during day or night hours and sub-periodic WBankrafty and sub-periodic Bruegium lie show this type of periodicity. The flavial worms, they cause two types of flariasis like lymphatic flariasis and tissue flariasis. And the tissue flariasis causes subcutaneous tissue flariasis or infection and the infect infective agent is Oncocircus volvulus and Loa Loa. These two, they cause subcutaneous infection or sometimes peritoneal cavity infection is caused by another uh, flare worm. All of the species are transmitted by insect vectors and there are eight species that could infect human beings. As we discussed, this tissue flariasis is caused by Oncocircus volvula, which is known as river blindness. Loa loa causes subcutaneous swelling, and the lymphatic flariasis, which is caused by W. crafty, is known as elephantiasis. So we'll discuss a bit detail of W. Bancrafti and Brugia lie infections. The morphology of the adult worm is that the worm is grossly a white silk thread-like and the Bancroftian worm is bigger than Brugia malai in size. And this is a morphology which describes that the W. Bancrafti is a sexually dimorphic species 
The adult male worm, male worm is long and slender, between 4 and 5 cm in length, a tenth of a centimeter in diameter, and has a curved tail. The female is a 6 to 10 cm long and three times larger in diameter than the male, and the microflavia are sheathed and approximately 245 to 300 nano microns in length. The larvae of the Brigham Lai microflavia are slightly smaller than those of the WBM grafting and the microflavia are sheathed and they are 200 to 275 micron meters in size. Not much is known about the adult worms as they are not often recovered. One distinctive feature of the Brugia Bly is that the microflavial nuclei extend to the tip of the tail, unlike the microflavia of the other one. The periodic W. Benedict is transmitted by species of mosquitoes belong to the genera Anopheles and Aedes and the sub-periodic is transmitted by Aedes mosquitoes. So the mosquitoes, they are, these are the vectors of the disease, Anopheles and Aedes. The location of the adult worm is the lymphatic system. The W. Benedicti superficial and deeper and it occurs in lower limbs, groin, scrotum, etc. While the Brugia MLIA, it locates the superficial lymphatics and mainly in the lower limbs. The infected stage larvae is known as flariform larvae and the infection root is the mosquito which inoculates or deposits the larvae on the skin and it discharges the microflavia. So it does not actually inoculate into the skin, it deposits the larvae on the skin which are then penetrated. The microflavia appear in the peripheral blood in high density during the night but hide in the pulmonary capillaries during the daytime while the host is awake. The peak time of W. Bancrafti microflavia in the blood is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. and for the Brugia Mlai is 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. The life cycle of the Infection is that infective larvae are deposited on the human skin by infected mosquito like Nopheles and Aedes as we told and this is done when, while the mosquito takes a blood meal and then the larvae penetrate the skin through the bite wound. Then by way of the peripheral blood vessels, larvae reach lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes and the development takes place in the lymphatics within 3 to 15 minutes, months the larvae become mature male and female worms. And these female worms, they can live for many years in the host depending in part on extent of host's immune response and the mean lifetime is 4 to 6 years but they can survive up to 15 years of or more than that. The adults they mate and produce many sheath larvae which then enter in, into the blood and these immature first stage larvae are known as microflarae and they can also be found in the blood after one year after infection. When only a few worms are present it will not be possible to detect microflavia in the blood. The microflavia are taken up by a mosquito vector when it sucks blood and the microflavia 
which are not ingested, they die within six months to two years. The life cycle continues itself in the stomach of the mosquito. The microflavi lose their sheath, they migrate from the midgut to the thorax of the vector where they develop into infective larvae. And this is the diagrammatic representation of the life cycle of double bend grafty and similar is the case of uh, Brugia mai. So the development in the mosquito takes one to two weeks and requires a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and relative humidity of 76 percent. The mature infective larvae migrate to mouth parts of the mosquito where they are ready to be transmitted where the insect takes next blood meal. The pathogenesis is that the main pathogenic factor is that adults are the pathogen or which cause uh, flaviasis or lymphatic obstruction and acute state is demonstrated as lymphangitis, lymphadenitis in case of Bruvia malai, it occurs in lower limbs while in case of the Bencrafti limbs and urogenital and spermatic cord is also involved and which causes epididymitis and sometimes orchitis. This is another representation or diagram of lymphatic flariasis. The clinical features are that there are only a few proportion of persons infected with WB and Crafty develop clinical symptoms. The lymphatic flariasis is characterized by recurrent attacks of fever with painful inflamed lymphatics. And damage to lymphatics leads to thickening and eventual blockage of the lymphatic vessels. The lymphatics involved are mainly those of the limbs, genital organs, especially those of spermatic cord in males and breasts in females. And they ultimately cause obstruction of the flow of the lymph causes swelling, fibrosis and eventually elephantiasis which is a characteristic clinical significant Elephantiasis is a complication of advanced lymphatic flariasis. It is seen as a coarse thickening, hardening and cracking of the skin overlying fibrous tissue. And this is a picture of the elephantiasis in which you can see that it is solar lower limb. One is bigger than the other and this is the characteristic feature of elephantiasis caused by a different crafting. And these are lymphatic flariasis which again has shown different uh, swellings or scrotum swellings. In chronic lymphatic flariasis and usually after repeated infections Hydrocele can occur. Now, hydrocele is a complication of lymphatic flariasis in male. And microflavi can occasionally be found in hydrocele fluid. And this is the picture of the hydrocele. Now, flavial worm infection can also be presented as non-flavial elephantiasis in tropical countries causes of elephantiasis other than flavial worms include tuberculosis and siliceous deposits or the people who work in silicon factory I mean asbestos or siliposis uh, factories in which damage to the local lymphatics 
with obstruction occurs when deposits are absorbed through bare feet. So this is one of the non-flavial causes of elephantiasis. So you, one can say that elephantiasis might be caused other than uh, Bruvia malai and Debbie The uncommon complications of chronic Bancroftian fluoriasis is chyle urea. Chyle urea is a condition in which chyle is found in the urine. It occurs when urogenital lymphatic vessels which are linked to those that transport chyle from intestine, they become blocked and ruptured and the chyle and microflavia can be found in the early morning urine specimen and urine shows as milky urine or white color urine. The microflavia are present in fibrin clots which form. Most patients with lymphatic flariasis show reduced immune response where eosinophilia is usually present. Infection with subperiodic Bancrofti is associated with flarial abscess. Another condition which is actually a hypersensitive reaction caused by the flariasis is known as occult flariasis and sometimes it is it also causes tropical pulmonary eosinophilia the occult flariasis is a rare condition which is caused by hypersensitivity reaction to microflarial antigens and the features of the lymphatic flariasis are not present in occult flariasis that's why it's known as occult and microflaria are not detected in the blood. Another condition is known as tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is a form of occult flariasis. Again, it is a hypersensitivity reaction to microflaria in lung and lymphatic tissue. It affects both children and adults, males being more common than females and it interferes with breathing because it happens in the lungs and it can lead to chronic pulmonary fibrosis. So the hypersensitivity manifestation of flariasis is known as tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. And the symptoms of the occult or the pulmonary so tropical eosinophilia are worse at night and marked eosinophilia raise ESR and high level of flarial antibodies including high titers of immunoglobulin E can be seen. Now this is the uh, difference between WPNCrafty and Bruvia MLI in which it shows that Crafty is large and smooth and it has uh, nuclei which are uh, different from that of the Bruvia MLI. This is the diagram of the microflavia which shows the sheet and the nuclei. This again is the microflavia of Blue EMLI and it is a bit different from the microflavia of the Dippelvan Crafty. And this again is the stained picture of the microflavia of Dippelvan Crafty. So these are the images of Blue EMLI and Dippelvan Crafty and this is the uh, life cycle. So this bancrafting fluoresis is shows elephantiasis of the scrotum, a huge scrotum. And this is elephantiasis and 
hydro C. So epidemiology is that it is a disease of the tropics where the vectors are found and this is a map of the, where the ge geographical, which shows the geographical distribution of the lymphatic filariasis. And it is endemic where the vectors are present and the vectors are mosquitoes like Culex and Enophilis. So how would you diagnose these? What is the lab diagnosis for flariasis or flarial worms? It depends on the etiological examination of stained thick blood smears are made in which microflarii are detected and identified and sometimes lymph, lymph node biopsy is taken. The lab confirmation of the infection with W. crafty, Rugia malaria species and Loa Loa is by finding microflarii in the blood and sometimes in urine and other body fluids and with oncocircus volvulus finding microflarii in the skin because it causes cutaneous flariasis. Infection with Drachenculus medinensis is confirmed by detecting larvae in the water surrounding a ruptured ulcer. Infection with Trichinella spiralis is by finding insisted larvae in muscle biopsy. So principle of the control depends on mass treatment and elephantiasis is baking bandage and mosquito biting control or mosquito control. Then we come to the another parasite which is which causes loiasis and the parasite is loa loa. It is subcutaneous flariasis is uh, also known as calabar swelling and the parasite is loa loa. It is also known as eye worm because the infection occurs around the eye or the adult worm sometimes migrates across conductiva or eyelid. That's why it is known as eye worm. The transmission of loiasis is caused by a blood sucking daytime biting flies of the genus Chrysops. They are also known as mangrove flies or horse flies. In this case, the life cycle is that the infected larvae in large number through deep wound made by infected chrysops, the larvae penetrate subcutaneous connective tissue and within 6 to 12 months, the larvae mature into male and female ones. So in this case again, the larvae are deposited on the skin and they penetrate the skin. The worms, the adult worms, they live 4 to 12 years in the host and they wander in subcutaneous tissue and occasionally in the conjunctiva of the eye, that's why it's known as eye worm. The vivipares female produces sheathed microflarii which are found in the blood during the day and they can be found in the tissue. So the life cycle is, the periodicity is diurnal periodicity. The life cycle again is in stomach of the chrysops, the, they lose their sheath, they pass through stomach wall, they penetrate thoracic muscles, they develop into infective larvae in about 10 days and the mature larvae migrate to the mouth parts of the, and they are ready to be taken by another vector. The clinical features and pathology of this is that Calabar swelling may last from a few days up to three weeks and in this case arms are frequently affected. Inflamed areas caused by allergic response to adult worm. The worms not present in swelling and they can be seen migrating below the skin surface. The adult worms they also migrate in subconjunctival tissue 
and they can be seen under the eyelids, occasionally slowly crossing the white of the eye. And they can cause inflammation, irritation, but they do not cause blindness. The microflavia, they do not cause any serious symptoms, but sometimes encephalitis can occur following treatment of the heavy infections, eosinophilic leukocytosis and high titers of specific antiflarial antibodies are found in patients of low acid. So that was low alveolar low acid. Then another is oncosurface volvulus, which causes cutaneous flariasis. And this is also known as river blindness. And the parasite is transmitted by simulium black fly and infective larvae they are deposited on the skin during the bite and they develop in male and female worms in the subcutaneous tissue and this development takes several months. In chronic oncocerciasis, skin loses elasticity and becomes wrinkled and makes the people look more aged and the condition is known as elephant skin. In this case, skin around the groin is hanging groin or sometimes it's also known as duper skin which refers to the spotted deep pigmentation associated with chronic oncocerciasis. So this, these are a few terms which can be asked in MCQs. The adults live in subcutaneous tissue and in lymph spaces. In later stages, worms become encapsulated in fibrous nodules. The worms can live up to 10 years or more in their host. The clinical findings in the pathology shows that Serious clinical features are caused by the inflammatory reactions around damaged and dead microflavia. It means that it is the microflavia which causes an inflammatory reaction and ultimately fibrosis. An inf in inflammatory reaction causes eventual encapsulation of adult worms in subcutaneous tissue and resulting nodules are called oncosarcomas. So oncosarcomas are actually fibrosis or fibrosed nodules. Inflammatory dermatitis is accompanied by intense irritation, raised papules on the skin and alteration pigmentation in the skin. And this is known as soda or black disease which is described as severe allergic response usually affecting one limb with darkening of skin. So in this case the allergic reaction is known as black disease. The most serious complication is when microflavia in the skin of the face migrate into the eye. And the microflavia can be found in the cornea and anterior chamber where they cause redness of the eye. Progressive changes caused by inflammatory reaction around damaged and dead microflurry can cause sclerosing keratitis and this sclerosing keratitis can lead to blindness. So in this case blindness may occur. Often iris is also affected. Inflammation of choroid and retina can also lead to blindness. Then we come to the Trachinicus medinensis, another parasite. In human host, the larvae, they are ingested, unlike others which we discussed where they were deposited. In this case, the larvae, they are ingested when drinking water contains infected cycles. Adult worms develop in the connective tissue. The female migrates usually to lower limbs and the larvae are produced. 
and these larvae they enter water when blister ruptures. So this Draconicus marinans is also known as guinea worm and the condition is known as draconitiasis which is often caused and it causes serious clinical symptoms especially in heavy infection. In this case the fumarium worm causes severe pain and allergic reaction including urticaria, fever, nausea and vomiting and damage to worm in the skin can produce severe inflammation. In this case secondary infection may also occur leading to cellulitis and occasionally septicemia and in rare cases tetanus may also occur which is a complication. If a joint is involved arthritis may develop and disease can have crippling effects preventing normal work activity with serious consequences. The lab diagnosis is that place a few drops of water on ulcer to encourage discharge of the larvae. We are talking about Drakenkulus medinensis. So a few drops of water are put on the ulcer. After a few minutes collect the water in a plastic pulp pipette and transfer the water on the slide and examine microscopically for motile larvae. And the treatment is that it takes time, that's why it is time wanted treatment consists of gradually extracting the worm. So the treatment of the guinea worm or the Drakenkulus magnesis is actually extracting the worm from the ulcer by winding it upon a stick over a period of days and ultimately it comes out. So these were a few uh, parasites which cause blood and tissue infections. Thank you very much.